guys, today I'm just going to talk um, about the half and a half knots. I have not been reviewing it because, like, on Tuesdays, it'd be hard to review the half and a half knot. So, um, I had kind of fell off. But, um, I got caught up for the last three episodes today. And I just want to talk about them. Um, I'm not going to talk about episode 19 because, whatever. It really wasn't too much for me. They was looking for Candace for her baby. Um, the baby got had an infection on 19. Um, so now they got to find Candace because only the parent can pick up the baby or they're going to um, put the baby in foster care. Uh, Jim whooped the professor ass. That was basically what happened on episode 19. So you got some, whatever. Um... And I still don't trust Oscar. I want to like him, but I don't trust him. Now, 20 and 21 with the the episodes to kind of watch. But I'm not going to go step by step. We're just going to talk about some things that happened. Let's talk about, well, Celine. Let's get her on out the way. Bitch is crazy. She pining over somebody that don't want her, and she too damn old for that. If I was her motherfucking oldest son, I'd be like, bitch, you got problems. I don't have time for this. Let me go get my damn brother, and let us get out of here, because you need to be committed somewhere, and I don't want my brother involved in this. You want to, you chasing after some dick that don't want to have nothing to do with their kids. Girl, boo. Um, so that was basically it with Celine, besides at the end of 22 episode, um, 21 episode. So... Let's talk about the whole Jim and Wyatt and this shit. So, y'all know Jim had Wyatt put in jail or whatever to act like Norman or whatever. So, I kept telling y'all that what if something happened to this boy while he in fucking jail? Why Jim is thinking this is okay. And this was so fucked up. Because they end up putting some guy that wasn't supposed to be in the cell with Wyatt. And Wyatt end up getting sexually assaulted. Um, and I guess he just gave the man head because he was walking straight. And he didn't say his butt was hurt. And he didn't grab his butt. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, that was just bad enough. Like, that takes, really probably take a man manhood to just get forced to give another man head when you're supposed to be straight. So, you know, I can understand of him feeling so fucked up. Um, but Jim, really? Jim? Really? Okay. Um, let's talk about okay. The DA end up coming to the house or whatever to talk to them about the whole car situation, play them a tape, whatever. Her and Veronica was going at it like two little ghetto ass school girls, whatever. If I was her, I would have fucked Veronica up and I'm glad that she did not back down her. But you not Veronica, you 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 ain't gonna be just calling people bitches and they just mm -mm. too many cast people, characters, whatever, is scared of fucking Veronica. Like everybody. I don't see nobody not scared of Veronica on this show. When Jim shuts up, Catherine shuts up. Everybody, well, Hannah not scared of her ass, so that was good. And Candace not scared of her ass, so that's kind of cool. But everybody else, Benny scared of her. Everybody scared of this bitch. Oh, that was a thing I forgot to mention in episode 19. She took the damn apartment from Jeffrey and gave it to that crazy bitch, Melissa. Because Melissa would do anything for her parents to be okay. Um, But yeah, so they talking to the DA or whatever... And they're telling her she don't have no evidence or whatever. And why is she talking to them? And I'm like, okay, David, you just gave her yourself away when you told her that you're not even supposed to be questioning us. And I would have been like, well, how do you know? How do you know if you didn't go and talk to somebody to, to, to quiet me up? And if I was her, yeah, I would keep looking too. Because there's too many people high up want to quiet her up for some shit. So, you rich motherfuckers ain't getting away with this. Um... But, so, anyway, when she leaves, they make a comment, Why? I mean, Jill makes a comment about Wyatt being out of town. And Veronica was like, yeah, um, something about him being in jail. So, she, they was like, well, how do you know? And she was like, David. So, David was like, when they got back in the house, David was like, bitch, I didn't tell you that, so how the fuck do you know? And she was like, I'm a good lawyer or whatever. So, now we know that Veronica ain't got this boy raped. I said, this bitch is cold game. But I don't expect nothing else but evil shit from her. Like, this bitch is evil. Like, black, she just bleed black poison. Like, whole 
evil. And how do you get your how do you get this dude raped by a man and you hate that your son is gay? Did, like I don't get that. How do you say it's okay for him to get fucked by a dude, but it's not okay for your son to get fucked by a dude? That was dumb to me. Um, I was so not here for that. That's probably another reason why I fell off on this show, because I don't like the way people do their kids. And to see this shit on this show just turned me off. And, yeah, I, I'm not here for that. So, anyway... David tells Jim, you need to go get your damn son out that jail. I just have a really bad feeling that you need to go get your son. So Jim ended up in 22. He ended up going to get him. I'm going to be all over. I'm going to be back and forth from 21, 22, whatever. Um, I mean, 2021. So um, Jim goes to the jail and gets white. And he's mad when they tell him that his son been sexually assaulted. But I'm over here like... You can't blame nobody in this situation but yourself. And now and I'm like, now that he ain't got raped, I'm like, now what would you do if this boy killed himself like Amanda? Because even after you found out he was raped, you did not even comfort your son. You still tried to make it seem like it was his fault. And that's what happens when you go to jail. What if this boy commits suicide? How would you say, who fault would you blame then? Because last time y'all blamed Candace, who fault would you blame now? Because only the people you can blame in this situation is you, your wife, Veronica, and David. Because you guys keep trying to cover up some shit that he's trying to free himself from. But y'all keep covering it up. And I think that's, like, really, really fucked up. Like, it made, that's why I'm telling y'all why I probably stopped watching it. Because as a parent, this is so fucked up to do to your child and then don't have no kind of compassion or remorse when you find out that he was raped. And then you want to go beat up the guards. And I was I was praying that the black guard fucked him up. I was hoping that the black guard be like, bitch, who, bitch what? You ain't going to swing on me like this. They don't pay me enough. And y'all motherfuckers know correction officers don't get paid enough to have Jim ass come in there. Rich white dude. Ain't even fucking warden, no nothing. Ain't signing my paycheck, no nothing. Gonna come in there and just swing on me? Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. I would have been in unemployment line the next motherfucking day. Like, no. Uh-uh. I would have been in motherfucking somewhere trying to... Give me a fucking law action suit going, but you're not gonna fuck me up and I just take it. Mm -mm. But anyway, why I just felt so bad for him. He ended up getting out, and then as soon as he got home, he called Jeffrey to pick him up, and I was just like, now you should see who your friends are. This motherfucker dropped whatever he was doing and come and get you like you asked him to do, but you always fucking shading him for being gay, dude, like for real. Um,. I was just so hurt on that. So let's talk about the whole Candace situation. Hannah's a bitch. Like, I kept telling y'all from season one, I don't like her. I hate fake-ass Christians. I hate people that try to use the Bible as a scapegoat. And that's what Hannah do. Hannah is the, she just as evil as fucking Veronica. Like, bitch, for real. Like, oh my God. Like, all the bad shit she act like Candace do. We haven't seen. We really haven't seen the bad, the the evil shit that the way she tried to make Candace be. We haven't seen that. Besides the shit she did to Jim, this Jim deserved that type of shit. But other than that, I've only seen Candace try to do good as far as, regardless of, you know, she did have motives behind Amanda. But hell, she was the only one fucking Amanda friend. Um... She's the only one been by Benny. If Benny, if it wasn't for Candace, homeboy would have had Benny, his daddy. Um, all of that. She had bought the boy a house, a fucking place to work, a, all of this. A car, all of this. And this bitch Hannah can't see none of that. You can't see none of that. Oh, but she was a bad mother, but you couldn't wait to pick up the phone to call her to get her ass from New York to get the baby. Only for her to you to say you gonna take the baby, Hannah, for real? I would have been, I would have been busting her out like, oh, I'm this and I'm that, but I'm the bitch that got your son. Uh, I would have put her on blast because she still ain't told Benny all about that whole situation with his dad and the court and all that kind of stuff. Benny still don't know nothing about that. 
So I would have put Hannah ass on blast when it came to that. Um, it was a, just a gang of shit. She was just making her sing so bad. And I was sitting there like, but you are mama. Where she get it from? And all motherfucking saints is have been sinners. And now we know you was the thought. The way Candace have went at you, we know your ass was out there too. So, like, for her to shade her daughter the way she was doing in front of the social worker, then I was like, you doing this and it's not making your case look good? Because I would have been like, well, you know what? Y'all going at it like this. He's not able to stay with neither one of y'all until y'all get y'all shit together. Then I'm sitting there like, um... Hannah, you don't make that much money being a motherfucking maid. I'm just saying. So stop trying to shade her. When you don't make that much money, you you catching the bus to work. I mean, I'm not shading nobody that catch the bus to work or, or a maid. But the way she just be acting like she just got everything to take care of this little boy. And I'm just like, um, you going to feel stupid. If you know she's doing bad and she doing this and she doing that and she got money and she got some dude with a private plane to get her back to the hospital, do you not think this private dude got some lawyers or and some money to be able to help her get her son? Like, oh my God, I was not here for Hannah doing Candace the way she was doing her. Yeah, she probably got flaws, but fuck. Like, she only convenient for when you need her. You She convenient for you to win that court case. She's convenient for her to come sign the papers to give them to you. Oh, I don't lie. I don't lie. Bitch, you's a motherfucking lie. And then I'm sitting there like, okay. So you're going to take him from the mom that probably can protect him, even if she got to get Ward and his dudes to come around, whatever. And you in your house by yourself and Quincy was able to come up in there and slap your ass around. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Because he's coming back after y'all ass. So you're not safe. And you talking about Candace and your house is not safe either because, hmm, Benny is the one to wreck the car, stand with you, wreck the car, took the boy, took the boy to your house, and you think danger ain't coming to your house? Shut that shit up. Whatever. So then even, you know, they trying to, the social worker questioning them. Oh, Hannah questioning Oscar. How, Oscar, you was better than me. Because I would have been like, bitch, I don't have to answer your questions. Are you the judge or the motherfucking jury, the social worker? Bitch, I don't have to answer you. Your daughter is grown. Um, But, the, you know, the social worker wants to know where she worked, where she lived. So Benny over there just giving up all the motherfucking 411. I was like, if you don't shut the fuck up. But he giving up all the 411. And then, you know, she told the lady, like, I haven't moved in yet, but I'm moving next week or whatever. And the lady going to tell her that it wasn't good for her to be staying in the hotel. And I'm like, that's a motherfucking lie. Because I know a lot of people that go through homeless programs and stuff like that. And they have to stay in a homeless, I mean, in a hotel before they place be ready and they be having kids. So shut that shit up. Um, but she ended up buying her a house, Benny a house. She, he ended up coming over. She gave him the house. And then the only stipulation was Hannah couldn't move in. So he was willing to give up the house. And I'm like, you are a grown ass man. I understand you not wanting your mama to be in the hood, but I'm like, she was offering to buy the bitch another house. You a grown ass motherfucking. This is why you're getting, that's why you getting busted. Um... That's why you getting busted fucking in your mama house. Because you, you you want her to come live in. Boy, you too grown for that. You too motherfucking grown. Um, yeah, Um. so we still got to wait on if the judge is going to give her or her mama the baby. But it didn't look like the mama was going to get the baby. But when the lady called to verify her job, they had never heard of her. So now she got to... Figure that shit out. But I'm I'm rooting for Candace to get this baby because Hannah don't deserve him. Especially to throw your daughter under the bus like that. I'm just like, that's fucked up. Um, oh, she ended up going to Mrs. Cryer to um get the judge to help her. And I was like, see? And you a Christian. But you about to lie to get the goddamn boy. Like, for real? Like, but you... See? I told you, can't fuck with them kind of Christians. 
Anyway, um, David and Veronica, that bitch is crazy because when the DA was talking to them about uh, the whole thing about the house being burned down in the car, that bitch was confessing the truth, but then going to try to, you know, hit her with, well, you asking me stupid shit, so I gave you a stupid answer, and I'm sitting there like, damn, that bitch really did tell the truth. But, yeah, David confronted her at the end of episode 21 about all the shit she done. And that's when she confessed, like, yeah, and I'm fucking a stranger, too. And I was like, David, you just the dumbest motherfucker. Because Maggie took him to the tow yard. And um, and he saw Veronica come out, but he never saw Benny. So he never knew who the owner was. And when he was, she was about to tell him about the affair, he thought she knew about the car. She was going to tell him about the affair. But then he was like, I can't take no more. Acting like a little punk ass bitch. So she didn't want to hurt his fucking feelings. And so she just let that shit go. And I'm like, no, don't, don't, don't. Ugh. But stop. You, you stop being scared of Veronica and, and just bust this nigga fucking bubble guts. Like, for real. Um... At the end, they had this, like, conference interview with Jim running for whatever he running for. And he was, you know, saying he running. And then the lady ambushed him about Celine's kids and all of them looking stuck on stupid. Um, Veronica ass is laughing. Um, oh, but before the conference, like I said, David confronted Veronica about all the bullshit she did, the rape. The everything. Um, and she hit that nigga with divorce papers. <laughs> I said, oh, because he told her she needs some fucking help. And that bitch hit him with divorce papers and said she was taking all her ass down. And I said, well, bitch, you're going to go with them because don't act like. Well, I don't know. That bitch is so slick and having people sign shit. She going to get that car probably. And she going to probably be off from that. But And then she going to have everybody else take the fall. I really believe that. Like, that bitch is so fucking cold. It's not even fucking funny. Um, I'm looking down at my notes because I'm trying to see did I miss anything. But I don't think I did. Yeah, but this episode was crazy. I mean, both episodes was crazy. I, if it's good next week, I'll be back into it. If not, I'll be back into it when they have a good episode. I'm not going to even lie to y'all. But, um, yeah, I just want to talk up really about Hannah and Veronica, how much of a bitch they are. They're so much of a bitch. But that's all I got from you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this, like, kind of rant of the half and a half. Not, so not a full review, but, um, yeah, I'm not here for them hoes. And I'm not here for people that treat their kids like bullshit. Like, they're a reflection of you. So what did you do that your kids is fucked up, Hannah? Not so much Veronica, because I'm not blaming her for her son being gay, or and he don't do nothing wrong. But uh, Wyatt, like, he do what he, he was doing what he was doing, because y'all was spoiling the fuck out of him, letting him be a spoiled rich brat. And now y'all over here trying to clean up his aftermath. You shouldn't have been fucking holding his fucking hand, and, and he was a grown-ass man. Um, but Hannah, bitch, um, where's she learning from? I'm just saying. Like, and now you mad? You should have been whooping her ass probably when she was little and she wouldn't have turned out like that. I don't know. Um, but like I said, that's my review on Half and a Half Knots. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all social media sites. I'm now on Periscope. I be trying to do videos, but sometimes I'll be forgetting I have Periscope. Um, but yeah, follow me. I'll do everything about the ghetto view. T-H-A, not T-H-E. And um, I'm your girl, Miss Nika. Make sure you guys are coming to the Blackout September the 5th in Atlanta, Georgia at the Crow's Nest from 3 to 8. And um, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.